Your starseed awakening was just the beginning. Now it's time for your cosmic initiation into your fully awakened galactic self. Welcome to Dimensional Shift for Starseeds. I'm Revi, your guide with the cosmic map of the multiverse. I've been a fully awakened galactic being for two years and have extensive experience channeling and downloading cosmic data to help advance human awareness and thought. My mission here at Dimensional Shift is to help you accelerate your self-initiation through soul reconnection, identity integration, purpose alignment, and mission activation. Hey everyone, welcome back to Dimensional Shift. I wanted to go over a few different things today, kind of an update of what's going on in the universe. I thought it would be fun since all of the politicians in the United States are giving all of their updates. Why shouldn't we give an update on what's going on in the universe as well? I have a few different things I'm going to be covering. The first is the Avalonian Orion Wars. The second one is the Civil War and Breakdown of Saturn, and then lastly, State of the Earth. So the first part here that I want to talk about is the Avalonian Orion War. This is not something that is widely understood. Most people understand that there are Orionid Wars going on, but a lot don't understand the involvement of the Avalonians and the casualties that they're taking. Now, the Avalonians are true and dear to my heart. I have an Avalonian aspect, and I often channel some of their war music and farewell songs, often on my drive to work, and it's very, very somber, and it's very sad, really, to be singing these songs of farewell, please come back to me, and having emotions for things that I don't understand that's going on. So the Avalonians would be how the Fae are to Earth. So there is a parallel Earth and the Avalonians would be the Fae. And so what happened is, or what's happening is, it's very confusing for me because here on Earth it's in the past, but when I channel my Avalonian aspect it's in the present, so it's confusing to talk about a little bit, but the Avalonians were kind of just living on Avalonia on their own little planet doing their thing, right? And the Orionids, which we're understanding now are not actually Orions. It was more of a farce, kind of like beings that came to Earth, right? Under the guise of the Orionids, and they befriended the Avalonians. They... Half of the Avalonians were like, nope, we have no interest in being your friend. We don't want to share anything with you. We don't want your information. And half the Avalonians were really curious and they really wanted to become friends. And so they started teaching the Orionids some of their magic. Like on Earth, the Fae had natural magic. The Fae taught humans learned magic. On Avalonia, it was much the same where the Avalonians taught the Orionids a learned magic. And then, of course, the Orionids turned it on the Avalonians. So the Avalonians, who are kind of more elven than fey, are now at war with the Orionids, who are using their magic against them. I have an Avalonian that wants to step forward and give a short channel about her perspective of what's going on there right now. Her name is Avalon, and she is my aspect of the Avalonians. And whenever I feel what's going on over there, it's because I'm experiencing her and her emotions and seeing through her eyes. Not all of us go to battle. Some stay to keep the homesteads ready for those who return. As they march off to battle, we sing them songs. Farewell, come back to me. It's not the end, come again. It's a little bit of magic that we can send with them. But really, the only magic we can send is our love and our hearts and our hope that they come back. 
we are not used to war. We have never been in a war on this level. Any war we've had has been between tribes, which is very rare. We are peaceful. We share our magic freely amongst tribes. We are not selfish. We don't worry about limited resources. We always feel like someone has our back. And to be betrayed like this by whoever these people are, whether they are truly Orion beings or Orion agents of the Archons, which is something we are still unfamiliar with, but what we understand is that the Archons come and they bleed a planet dry, and those who fall to the greed and the power hunger go on to other planets to bleed them dry. And it goes on and on and on, and all we can do is stand up and fight to protect our homes. We are not optimistic about this war. We feel similar to what Earth must be going through, where some of us will ascend on a timeline split, if you will, where some are left behind to become agents of the Archons themselves, fall into the greed, and to the power hunger, and to the selfishness. They go to war in armor, with swords and bows, but we know that it's not that kind of battle. This is a spiritual battle. It's a mind battle. They will be offered freedom from battle. They will be offered freedom from death. They will be offered money, prestige, power, any temptation that you can think of. Anything to get away from the pain and the misery and the death that seems to be coming for all of us. Not everyone we sent will return to us. Most will fall and, as I said, become agents of the Archons to go somewhere else and do it again. Even now as I speak, I feel the darkness closing in. But we will fight just as you are fighting because to give in is simply not an option. So we play out in the macro what you are playing out in the micro, or perhaps it is the opposite. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Just know that you are not alone in your fight, you are not alone in your struggle, and that I hope someday our timelines will merge and the Avalonians and the humans or the freed galactics will become one and we will get to meet each other on a different level, on a level of freedom, on a level of love and trust and mutual agreement. And together we can mourn our lost brothers and sisters and friends. I wish I had more of a message of hope, but I suppose right now we are feeling mostly despair, just as many of you are. And so all I can say is we just have to keep going. We just have to keep protecting ourselves, sending love to those who fight, and supporting each other. That's all we can do. Okay, I had to give myself a minute to recenter after that channel. That was a lot more uh, emotional than I was expecting. And thank you, Avalon, for sharing that because it really is the micro to the macro in either way. So next I have Tisa, who is part of the Mind Warriors, which is a soul group I'm in. And she wants to talk about the civil war and the breakdown of the Saturnal groups and the infighting that's going on in the malicious collectives. Thankfully, Tisa is a lot more straightforward and tends to be a lot less emotional. The Saturnal groups are breaking down. There's a lot of civil war going on. There's a lot of infighting, a lot of power grabs, and people trying to scramble to the top. Pretty typical for people who want only for themselves. The greys are out. If you encounter a grey, tall or short, they're on their own agenda and they're doing whatever the hell they want. 
which is fine, I guess. At least they're not necessarily a threat in a larger scale. If you encounter a gray, you do have the ability to tell them to fuck off. I give you full permission. Generally, they're not too harmful. They just want to have some experimental fun. That being said, when you tell them to fuck off, you have to actually feel it. You cannot just be afraid and say it. You have to mean it in a way that will, I suppose, in some way frighten them. The reptilians are on their way out. They have been removed from the center of power in the main Saturnal groups. They are sort of clinging at the sides, trying to maintain a grasp of their power and money and prestige, but no one in the Saturnal groups is taking them very seriously anymore. They have had far too much exposure, and honestly, their tactics have become somewhat archaic. The white lighters, who are the shapeshifters and who prefer to appear as angels to get you to trust them, still seem to be somewhat of a threat if you are buying into the most galactics are all good and angels are here to save us thing. White lighters themselves do little damage, but unfortunately they are the henchmen for the bigger guys who will lead you astray and directly into their waiting arms. If you encounter a being that f appears to want to help you and do good, but feels a little bit cheesy, like it's a little bit too good to be true and a little bit too loving and maybe a little bit too bright or whatever it is, just ask some questions. Trust your intuition. These guys are actors, but they're not Academy Award winners. Most of them are copying very, very archaic, traditional, angelic signatures. And if it appears as a bright light and as a white man with wings, then you need to be asking some questions. The Alpha Draconians continue to be a threat, although they have been removed from some of their positions of power because of their own misuse and abuse of the system. They have their own agenda and those that they're supposed to be working for don't appreciate that very much. Going on up from there, we have the top of the top, which is the Archons and the Quantum Manipulators. Some people call the Quantum Manipulators the Quantum Reality Fuckers. They're kind of the same thing. They're not managing their army very well. There is a lot of fighting within the groups and between the groups. And as the Matrix continues to break down, as the light workers and starseeds and galactics are awakening, they are starting to panic just a little bit. This is just making them tighten their grip down even further on humans and the Matrix itself, doubling down on illusion and addiction and technology and all of that. And a lot of people on Earth are suffering more because of it. Remember that they have power through your despair, depression, anger, fear, any negative energy that they elicit from you is power to them. While we at the Mind Warriors don't believe in toxic positivity, the more time you can find to carve out for stillness, for calm, for simplicity, for gratitude, is time that you take away from them having power over you. And the less power they have over you, the less power they have in general. The micro to the macro. Whatever you heal in yourself, you heal in others. I want to talk a little bit about the quantum manipulators because this is a group that has lurked in the background and is not well known. I and Revy will probably get some lashback for this, but we're prepared for that. The quantum manipulators have been around as long as the Archons. They seem to be an essence of the cosmos itself and the collective split because one group wanted to abuse its power and the other part of the group didn't. Typical, right? Heard this story before. Quantum manipulators are one of the only collectives that we've ever seen that have the ability to take matter and rearrange it into something else. 
This would be like taking lead and turning it into gold. They are the original alchemists, but just as alchemists do, they either use their power for good or they use it for evil. Unfortunately, the ones who use it for evil are the ones that are most well known right now, and the rest of the quantum manipulators are underground to protect themselves from the other part of their collective. There is a significant number of quantum manipulators among you on Earth. Unfortunately, your abilities to quantum manipulate are veiled. At some point, when that is all removed, quantum manipulation will be restored to you. Perhaps not on Earth. We're unclear about that as of yet. Theoretically, you should be able to, but we have yet to cross that bridge. As it is, if you are a quantum manipulator, you are a target for other quantum manipulators if you make yourself known, if you have serious addiction issues, if you have issues in your life with drugs, sex, alcohol, shopping, social media, those sorts of things. And we're not talking spending a couple hours on social media a night. We're talking serious addiction problems. This is one of the best ways that quantum manipulators keep quantum manipulators distracted. Going back to Saturn, we have a systemic breakdown happening, which is good news for us, but it also begs the question of what's going to happen next in their chaos, who's going to grab power next in their chaos, and is the next boss going to be worse than the current boss? Okay, rev you back. It's a lot of heaviness in this podcast, so I wanted to end it on a good note with a transmission that came to me the other night. The transmission can be found on my blog, dimensionalshifter.com, and I'm going to just read it to you because it's such a beautiful message of hope, and I'm praying that it will give you enough to keep going, even though times are dark. There's a lot of pressure and despair and depression going on right now but you need to break it down to a very basic level if you're getting out of bed if you're getting up and doing the most basic things of taking care of yourself then you are winning right now so this is from Carrigon, a liar and master in the best mystery school and i'm just reading it from reddit this is in a live transmission but hopefully his essence will come through He says, O brave one, one who does not realize how brave they are, one who does not realize that real bravery is facing the fear day by day, and right now there is so much fear. You are brave for rising each morning. You are brave for going out into the world. You are brave for speaking kind words to another. All of these actions in the face of real fear in the world right now is true bravery. Anything not done in the face of fear is just action. But with the fear level at 100 plus right now, each action you do is brave. Fear is the weapon with which they try to control you and strike you down, keep you in your place, keep you small and quiet, acquiescent. But you do not go quietly into the vague darkness that they attempt to lead you into. No, you stand tall, you stand proud, You shine your light out into that darkness for others to see, simply by being you. While it may seem so little sometimes, your light is a beacon for others to be brave as well, shining their own light in their own way. Not everyone's light is meant to be a beacon to help others to be brave and stand tall. Sometimes their light is meant simply to be a guide to others who pass into the darkness with them, much as Sharon the ferryman carries a light on his boat as he carries souls across the river into the underworld. Not all souls are choosing to stay, to continue on, but some will continue to be trapped in this loop, their fear trapping them here. But others have been set free and are simply choosing this time to exit, which is a success for all involved. While your battle may seem to be to awaken those on a human level, Your battle is actually to awaken them on a spiritual level, 
and you are so much more successful than you can tell from your earthly perspective right now. Most of those who are exiting physically at this time have been set free from the karmic imprisonment wheel and are choosing to return elsewhere in their galactic form. A true success. Continue to be brave spiritual soldiers of light. By shining, you are wielding the greatest weapon possible, that of hope, freedom, choice, love, and compassion, all of which have been slowly stolen away from those on this planet for so long. You are a beacon of hope. Do not dim because you cannot see how far your light shines. I am here to tell you how much of an absolute success you have been and continue to be. Shine. Keep shining. Do not be afraid. Do not be weary. Let your light of hope carry you through. If you love this episode, please be sure to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so other star seeds can grow into their fully awakened galactic selves just like you. I know you're really excited to start reconnecting to your soul, owning your identity, discovering your purpose, and activating your mission. So check out my site, dimensionalshifter.com, join the galactic community on Discord, or ask your questions on my subreddit. All of those links are in the show notes. Thanks for tuning into the frequency today. Tune back in next.